Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Barbados' explanation for accepting the Ross University after it left Dominica is called into question. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, August 8th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. A senior diplomat in Dominica says Ross University School of Medicine could have resumed operations in the island in January next year. The claim on Wednesday by Dominica's ambassador to the United States and the Organization of American States, Vince Henderson, came on the heels of Barbados's Prime Minister Mia Motley saying her country only accepted Ross when the university indicated that returning to the Eastern Caribbean island for the start of the January 2019 semester was not an option. Speaking on a radio program last night, Henderson said Dominica had informed the U.S.-owned university that it could have resumed operations even before next January. Ross had been forced to relocate to two places, St. Kitts and the United States, that's in Tennessee, after Hurricane Maria devastated Dominica last September. But reading from a three-page letter Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt had sent to the university just last month, Henderson said plans were advanced for the resumption of classes in Portsmouth. I fervent hope that all things considered, there will be a much earlier reopening of the campus than has been indicated in your earlier communication and during your visit in April. Utilities, I have been fully briefed by the utility companies on the status of their respective programs for restoration of their services, and I take the opportunity to update you on this matter, which I am aware is of concern to the university. Flow, one of the telecommunication service providers, has informed that all internet, mobile, and fixed line services were restored at the university in October 2017. Digicel, the other telecommunication service provider, has restored 85% of its mobile service nationally and the same level of its fiber internet home and entertainment service. However, in the Picard area, including Ross University, these services have been fully restored. The Dominica Electricity Services Limited, Domlac, restored electrical power to the university and the Picard area on October 11, 2017. Legal advisor to the Skerritt government, Anthony Astafan, who also spoke on the radio program, said some regional leaders expressed concern about the development and have pledged solidarity with the government and people of Dominica. I should just tell you that there, um, one prime minister in particular upset to me that I can state publicly that Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and his wife stand in full solidarity with us. And the prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda has indicated to me that he intends to speak to Prime Minister Rosemary Skerritt about it as well. So there's some concerns, there's some concerns at the highest level that something is amiss. No, I... I also understand there is uh, in, in circulation some suggestion that government officials may have said to us or to the Barbados government that, quote, a January startup was highly unlikely. That is absolutely false. I, I, I want to state, I think we owe it to the Dominican people. At no time did any government official from the Prime Minister down, tell Ross or the Barbados government that the January 19, 2019 setup was unlikely. Meantime, opposition leader Lennox Linton is blaming the government for the departure of the university. At a media conference on Wednesday, he said he was concerned about the economic hardship that would hit businesses in the area where the university was located, as he noted that Ross contributed to approximately 30% of the economic activity in that area. 
There is no easy fix to this devastating body blow that the country has suffered with the exit of Ross. Attempts by the Prime Minister and his team to soft soap it as a blessing in disguise and open the door to passport money hotels in the Portsmouth area is disingenuous and insensitive to those whose economic hopes and dreams have been shattered by this government's clueless, cluelessness and incompetence. St. Vincent and the Grenadines' main opposition party says it will campaign against any effort at this point in time to replace the Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Justice as the island's highest court. Opposition leader and New Democratic Party President Dr. Godwin Friday said the issues that were raised when the population rejected the move in a referendum in 2009 are still relevant. Those include lack of confidence in the judicial system, a matter which Friday says has not yet been addressed. The opposition leader dismissed suggestions that corruption within the judiciary may be at the heart of the party's decision not to back the CCJ at this time. Last month, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said he was prepared to go to Parliament to change the constitution to allow for the island to join the CCJ, but said he would need the support of the opposition NDP. A two-thirds majority in Parliament is needed to support the change in the constitution, but Gonzalez's Unity Labour Party only has a one-seat majority, eight seats to the NDP's seven. The government of Antigua and Barbuda is said to have officially, officially received extradition papers for Indian billionaire Mehul Choksi, reports in the news. That's the New Indian Times and the NDTV online newspaper say the extradition papers were hand-delivered to foreign ministry officials in Antigua last Saturday by Indian officials who made a visit to the island specifically for that purpose. Choksi, who obtained Antigua and Barbuda citizenship under the Twin Island Nations Citizenship by Investment Program, is wanted in India for questioning as one of the alleged masterminds behind the $2 billion U.S. dollar scam at the state-run Punjab National Bank. He left India for Antigua on January 4th this year and took the oath of office as the oath of allegiance on January 15th. When the matter first became public a few weeks ago, Choksi denied any involvement in fraudulent activities in his country. His lawyer had said his client was innocent and that the charges against him were politically motivated. Indian authorities say Choksi's extradition would be a major breakthrough in their quest to have economic fugitives captured and returned to face the consequences. Meanwhile, the Indian government has started deliberations on changing the Passport Act to bar willful loan defaulters from leaving the country. They say this is an attempt to clean up the banking system. And still to come in Caribbean Newsline, a court in Venezuela orders the arrest of two opposition lawmakers in connection with an alleged assassination attempt on the president. Stay with us. There's more news after the break. Join leading media and communications executives as well as climate change experts in Kingston, Jamaica from August 13 to 15 for the Caribbean Broadcasting Union 49th Annual General Assembly. This year's assembly, held in partnership with the CARICOM Climate Change Center, explores the theme, Building Resilience to Climate Change, Business, Technology and Content Options for Caribbean Media. Featured presenters include the Honorable Dr. Rua Reed, Jamaica's Minister Responsible for Information, the region's Chief Climate Change Negotiator, Mr. Carlos Fuller, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica, and the International Telecommunications Union Caribbean Office. And broadcast manufacturers and media services enjoy special exhibition rates at this year's conference, joining premier exhibitor Utilsat. For more information on discounted rates for delegates staying at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel or flying on the official airline, Caribbean Airlines, go to the CBU website or call the Secretariat. The CBU looks forward to welcoming you to this key conference on climate change and the Caribbean media.
Venezuela's Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered the arrest of prominent opposition leader Julio Borges in connection with an assass alleged assassination attempt on President Nicolas Maduro. It also called for the prosecution of another opposition lawmaker, Juan, who police detained a day earlier. The actions follow what government said was a foiled attempt on Maduro's life last Saturday. The president said statements from some of the six suspects who were arrested have implicated the two lawmakers as well as key Finances. The country's pro-government constitutional assembly voted unanimously on Wednesday to strip the two lawmakers of their immunity from prosecution. Both men deny any role in the drone attack which occurred last Saturday. This week in Newsline Business, as the government of Barbados continues to seek ways to bolster the floundering economy, it's getting some advice coming from a former central bank governor. Former Central Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell is advocating that the Barbados government of Prime Minister Mia Motley lease the island's ports of entry as a means of stimulating economic growth and job creation. Worrell, who has been critical of the handling of the economy by the previous Frundell Stewart administration, says the government would need to make major investments to realize the economic potential of the ports, something he adds they can ill afford at this time. Barbados is also geographically positioned to be a fulcrum between North and South America. Logistically, the island seems natural for air transport links between the Americas. The potential for air freight would appear to offer an opportunity for substantial new business, an opportunity which has not previously been recognized. Speaking in his monthly podcast on the Barbados economy, Worrell says leasing to major international companies would address all the challenges to realizing the economic potential of the island's seaport and airport. The operator would bring business through its global network far beyond anything that the Barbados government could attract on its own. The operator would have access to its own sources of financing, something which is important to a government which has lost access to international financial markets. The former bank governor says the selection process should be taken seriously and done carefully and that the applicants should be major international players with proven track records. Leasing of the Bridgetown Port and the Grant Lee Adams Airport is the most consequential privatization option available to government. It provides government with a dependable source of income. It secures major international investment, an ongoing priority for Barbados. And it opens entirely new markets and lines of business. Operation of ports and airports by private firms is now commonplace in advanced countries. Worrell is confident that privatizing the ports can lift overall economic growth by up to 1% per year with the associated job creation and access to a global network of possibilities. And ahead in Newsline Sport, defending CPL champions Trinbago Trin Night Riders begin the campaign to retain their title in just over an hour, and they're feeling no pressure. Stay with us. Sport is next. This hurricane tip comes to you, compliments the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and the Caribbean Media Corporation. Be prepared. Before, during, and after hurricane hits, Keep working phone lines free for important calls. False slides because that's the only way to get down the trolls when it comes to Just lock up the brakes yeah. and pray. And pray that you're going <laughs> to not hit the trees. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I love trees, but <laughs> not that much. John knows these trails better than anyone around here. So we're going to go out and hit the trail on some of these sweet specialized bikes and see if we can hurt ourselves.
Dominica's World Creole Music Festival in 2018, October 26, 27, 28 at the Windsor Park Stadium in the capital city, Roseau. Three nights over eight genres, 40 years of independence, one location, Do Dominica, the 20th edition of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival. For more information, like our Facebook page, Dominica Festivals. Visit our website, www.dominicafestivals.com for all travel, accommodation, and ticketing details. My love, my home, my Dominica. Building a resilient nation. See you there. Proudly sponsored by the government of Dominica and Discover Dominica Authority. The 2018 Caribbean Premier League, the CPL, gets on the way in less than two hours with defending champions Trinbago Knight Riders confident of their chances in the opening match against St. Lucia's Stars. Knight Riders captain Dwayne Bravo says his side isn't under any pressure. In fact, he says it's Stars who went winless in last year's tournament who will be under the microscope. Speaking ahead of the first match at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad at 8 p.m., Kieran Pollard, a first-time St. Lucia's Stars captain who joined the squad for this year after playing for the Barbados Tridents since the inception of the CPL says his team will give their best shot. We get more in this report from Ian Wayson of Seasport. The TKR captain, Dwayne Bravo, says the TKR strength is their self-belief. He says they are the only team to retain 90% of the team from last year. Although they lost Ronsford Beaton, who bowled the fastest ball in CPL 2017, they have added another speed merchant in Shannon Gabriel. Bravo says his team is not under any pressure. No pressure on our team, pressure on their team. They haven't done anything in, 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 in a while and uh, the pressure is there with them and it's, it's no secret. But Pollard is one of the best players in the world, um, one of the most successful T20 players in the, that, in the world as well. So it's not going to be a, a walk in the park. Um, I said, um, you know, the name remained but a lot of different players is there now. They have Leonard Simmons as well, who is also a very good player. The two good friends then engaged in some banter. I want to wish you all the best in the new endeavors, and you can do worse than we normally do with the stats. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Me? No, he summed it up pretty well, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think he said all the right things. Um, but you know, for me, he also said, and I also believe that, you know, when it comes to cricket, you know, we can talk a lot of things inside of here, but cricket won't play in the press conferences. So, if you go out and, you know, with our small team that haven't done anything, we'll see if we can do a little better. At least we win one game more than we did last year. The other four teams in the 2018 CPL are Barbados, Trident, Guyana, Amazon, Warriors, St. Kitts and Nevis, Patriots and Jamaica, Talawas. A total of 34 games will be played in the tournament, which culminates on September 16th. Meanwhile, former Pakistan captain Shahid Afridi will not turn out for the Jamaica Talawas in this year's CPL. The 38-year-old all-rounder was signed as the Talawas marquee player, but rehabilitation from a knee injury he sustained during the Pakistan Super League in March is still ongoing. Talawas head coach Mark O'Donnell isn't saying yet who his replacement will be. It has been sorted out yet, but until he gets on a plane, there is no comment about <laughs> whom it is. So he's meeting us in Trinidad, um, but there'll be a, a, an announcement coming through from the franchise later. So that, you know, there are little difficult things, but it's just how well you, um, you overcome obstacles, how well you start. I think that is T20 cricket to a T. Uh, so our preparation's been very good, and it's a case of making sure that we start reasonably well in those first few games and you get a bit of momentum. Leading cricket historian is urging Cricket West Indies to continue to bridge the gap with players to ensure the best cricketers are available to the regional side. Karen Madden of TVG Sport reports. There has been tension involving the region's best cricketers and Cricket West Indies over the players' availability to play for the regional team. All this as the lure to play in lucrative T20 leagues around the globe has increased. One of those that has led the call questioning the loyalty of regional players is UWI Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. Matters reached ahead in the recent past when Beckles, a Barbadian, described Jamaican superstar cricketer Chris Gale as a donor. 
But speaking in an interview with TVJ Sports at a recent Fosca Oats breakfast for the Jamaica Tallowers, Beckers appeared to soften his stance. There was a time when I felt that our players were being used against the West Indies because we were the poorest country in the world that was playing test cricket and therefore we were most vulnerable and we became the only country that could not put its best team on the field. And even as the debate rages about whether the 2020 version of the game is sounding the death knell for test cricket, Beckers believes that there is room for all formats. Well, there, there certainly is a, a tension at the moment in terms of the, the culture of renumeration. Uh, there's also um, a psychological difference, and I think that some of the, some of the younger people um, would like closure of an activity at an earlier time uh, as opposed to a stretched out. But it's a combination of individual personalities plus physical capabilities. Test cricket is physically difficult. But I'm discovering also from talking to the younger players that the intensity of 2020 brings its own kinds of physical exhaustion. And the former head of the region's high performance center believes that players who have no interest in test cricket should not be punished. My philosophy is that the, the arena is large enough to accommodate these three forms and we need to strike the balance, encourage youngsters to make their choices and having made their choices, help them to maximize their potential within their choice so that we, we have balance. If you have balance, it removes the competition element. The Barbadian believes that the current board and players association have made strides in easing the tension, but more needs to be done. There is, there is room for um, an equalization of renumeration around the choices so that when you don't play a test series, you don't feel as if you have lost a bag of money. So we still need to inject some resources into the equation so that players, when they make choices, they are still balanced. Most recently, Cricket West Indies CEO Johnny Grave had discussions with the likes of brothers Darren and Dwayne Bravo, as well as Sunil Narain and Karen Pollard, in an attempt to smooth over relations between themselves and the board. Cricket West Indies also changed the schedule for its regional tournament so as to avoid a clash between popular T20 leagues around the world, possibly clearing the way for the players to play in the regional 50-over tournament, ultimately making them eligible for West Indies selection. Switching sport now, Trinidad and Tobago women's football team coach Jamal Shabazz has called it quits 13 months after he replaced Italian Carolina Morassi. He handed in his resignation to the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association on Wednesday. Shabal served as head coach for the women's national under-17, under-20 and senior teams. But just a week after returning from the Central American and Caribbean Games in Colombia, where the women's soccer warriors finished fourth but managed only one draw and three losses from their four outings, the veteran coach has decided to call it a day. In his resignation letter addressed to General Secretary of the TNT Football Association, Justin Latapie George, Shabazz said that after careful consideration of all of the factors surrounding what is required for the team to go forward, it is in the best interest of the team and the country that he step aside and make way for someone who can bring more to the table. Shabazz said despite his departure, he would remain a staunch supporter of the team in particular and women's football in general. Jamaican sprint legend Usain Bolt will join football club Central Coast Mariners in Australia's A-League for an indefinite training period, but the eight-time Olympic champion and 100 and 200-meter world record holder will not be guaranteed a professional contract at the club. Bolt, who retired from athletics in 2017, will link up with the A-League side for the first time on August 18. Chief Executive Officer at the Central Coast Mariners, Sean, said Bolt would be welcomed with open arms, but the club remains grounded and focused on the job in hand. The 31-year-old Bolt has already trained with three other clubs, one German, one South African, and another from Norway. 
Jamaica's under-15 reggae girls were soundly beaten by the United States in the opening game of the CONCACAF Age Group Championship on Tuesday. The young reggae girls were no match for their American counterparts, going down 8-0 at the IMG Academy in Florida. Coach Andre Wu Price says the team will be hoping for better fortunes when they take on El Salvador in their second contest on Wednesday. We get more in this report from TVG Sport. American girls found themselves behind as early as the 11th minute as a clever pass from a free kick freed up Catherine Rader to put the U.S. 1-0 up. Alicia Thompson made it 2-0 just three minutes later. And then when Rader netted her second in the 19th minute, the match threatened to turn into a rout. The Jamaicans were unable to stave off the continued attack from the CONCACAF powerhouses. And Jaden Shaw made it 4-0 heading into the halftime interval. The second half brought more of the same with a marker phrase uh, scoring in the 48th and 56th minutes to make it 6-0. And there was more misery for the young reggae girls as a substitute, Olivia Moultrie, made it 7-0. America Frace completed her hat-trick and finished the Jamaicans off in the 66th minute to get the United States off to a flying start. Well, no games are easy. Um, today was a difficult one against the U.S. team. and They are a seasoned champion. Uh, played a lot of internationals. Um, this game today was the first international for a lot of the young ladies and it took some time to get them to adjust to the pace of the game. The Andrew Price coach to team will now turn their attention to El Salvador come Wednesday. None of the games are going to be easy, but you know, we'll have to come out with some gusto tomorrow. I think having played early this morning, they would have um, adjusted, so uh, they'll be ready for tomorrow's game. And it's just to motivate them and get them up for the game tomorrow. It's a learning curve. That's the sport. We'll be right back. Dominica's World Creole Music Festival in 2018, October 26, 27, 28 at the Windsor Park Stadium in the capital city, Roseau. Three nights over eight genres, 40 years of independence, one location, Do Dominica, the 20th edition of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival. For more information, like our Facebook page, Dominica Festivals. Visit our website, www.dominicafestivals.com for all travel, accommodation, and ticketing details. My love, my home, my Dominica. Building a resilient nation. See you there. Proudly sponsored by the government of Dominica and Discover Dominica Authority. Her passion for what she believes is unmatched. So you could, I wanted to get to the point where you can shake me off that perfect piece. He's a book off, radio host, philanthropist, and motivational speaker. And I said, I'm going to write you a check for 10000 which I'm not. <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. Some help through the transition. I'm Karita D, and you're listening to Girlfriend Get a Life. Again, the major developments of this day, Barbados' explanation for accepting the Ross University School of Medicine after it left Dominica is called into question, as Dominican officials say the island was ready for the university to return following its relocation as a result of Hurricane Maria. And in sport, defending CPL champions Trinbago Knight Riders begin the campaign to retain their title in about an hour, and they're feeling no pressure. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, subscribe to carnanews.com. For more of our programming, log on to caribvision.tv and subscribe to Caribvision's YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>